Hey, Jens fans, welcome back to interview 10 of our summer series. As always, I'm your host, Ty Comer. Uh, coming to you guys for a second straight day. We're back to back, and for a second straight day, we've got uh, a dominant right-handed pitcher on tap for you. Uh, he got a, he got to Waynesboro a little bit late in 2014, but he was there to win a championship, and he did just that with the team. Uh, and he would later be drafted from his alma mater of Embry Riddle by his hometown San Francisco Giants in the 10th round of the 2015 draft. Uh, in his minor league career, he's thrown over 200 innings and boasts an ERA of well under three. Uh, once spring training, or I guess July 1st training, begins here in a little under a week, uh, he'll be back on the go. But for now, he's here talking with us into Waynesboro. Uh, please welcome Tyler Sear. What's up, Tyler? How you doing, Ty? Good to see you again. Good, man. Good to see you. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Tyler did come back. He uh, what well, you threw a, a few innings in Richmond last year, right? And then you, you made a trip up to Waynesboro after you finished your outing. Yeah, yeah. I pitched – I think two and two thirds. Um, the day that I made the trip out there, we had a uh, we had a morning game, and I was able to drive out the next day. It was kind of on the fly. I called uh, called Tyler and said, uh, "Hey, I kind of have something in mind. Would you guys be open to having me?" He said, "When are you going to be here?" And sent me the address. So uh, that was awesome to see that. And uh, the Waynesboro community always welcomes me with open arms, and uh, it was a blessing to uh, you know kind of get back to the roots there. Sure. Um, so, you know, with all this stuff going on right now, the uh, all the COVID stuff, obviously you guys started spring training, but then uh, got shut down. So what have, you, what have you been up to? Where have you been? What, what's going on? Yeah. So for, for me, um, you know, I've been in Arizona. Um, you know, at first Arizona wasn't really a hot spot for COVID. Now it's obviously the epicenter. Um, so things are kind of progressing in the opposite direction now. But thankfully for me, uh, I was able to still train and maintain um, you know, healthy routine and healthy habits throughout the process. So I've been pretty lucky. Um, it's obviously a tough time uh, for our nation with COVID and, uh, you know, our nation coming together and uh, tackling uh, injustices and inequalities and systematic racism, which I think is huge. Um, you know, the more that we come together on that, um, you know, and the quicker that we can make changes for systematic racism, I think uh, our nation will be better. And it's unfortunate that this is during a pandemic um, so we're kind of, you know, the communities uh, around the nation are tied. But uh, I've been very blessed um, thus far to continue to train here, here in Arizona. So, Well, and, you know, I, I've always thought that uh, sports is a, is a good way to uh, bring a lot of people together that wouldn't normally be together and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So it was awesome to see that you guys are officially coming back. It's uh, We're going to have some professional baseball here soon. Uh, so obviously it's July 1st. So what – what does your uh, what is your time between now and July first look like? Uh, it's kind of like a chicken with its head cut off, kind of going <laughs> around everywhere. Yeah, um, you know, the 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 rumors have been going around that baseball was going to happen eventually, but um, sometimes it takes longer, right? Um, we got our first taste as a nation on the business side of baseball. Um, you know, thankfully. Um, throughout grueling and, and not very pretty negotiations, we were able to resume baseball. So for me right now, um, it looks like, you know, preparing and packing my necessities. Um, you know, this is my sixth year so far going on six full seasons. So um, I'm pretty good packer. You know, I know what I need. You know, you bring a couple suits, um, nice pair of jeans, you know, so, um, and more so on the training side, um, nothing really changes. I'm just gonna continue to do my routine. I'll have a bullpen today and then uh, recovery tomorrow and then kind of prepare to make my way to San Francisco um, on Sunday. That's cool. So, and I've always wondered this too, how, when you're by yourself, like, do you have a guy that you can call that can catch you in bullpens? Cause it's not a lot of guys that you can just be like, Hey man, you want to come catch 97 here for yeah. a minute? Yeah. So um, this gym that I'm partnered with, Push Arizona, um, they're actually in Colorado as well. The original was in Colorado, and now we have one in Push. Uh, sorry, one in Arizona. Um, you'd be surprised. I mean, there's there's young men in there who are seniors in high school, juniors in high school who are catching, you know, elite arms right. um, Monday through Saturday. Obviously, due to COVID, it's a little different, right? We have to kind of space out. Are, are people coming into the gym um but we're pretty lucky at push we have we have absolute animals behind the plate as in catchers and they want to get better and they want to train we even have catchers approach us 
asking us or almost in, insinuating us to throw a bullpen because they want to catch. Yeah. You know, um, so that's a blessing. Um, and that's for me, that's kind of how it is, has been this far. Good deal. Well, uh, before we get back to your college days, we'll go back and uh, talk about spring training this past, uh, I guess that was back in February and March. Yeah. Um, you started with the, the big league club there and, uh, you know, you had a great year last year. You were a double-A all-star for Richmond, and then uh, you ended up finishing the season with triple-A Sacramento for the Giants. Uh, any ideas where you think you'll start this season this season? Um, so, obviously, as you know, I think the minor leagues is uh, is no more this year. Um, so, what it looks like is going to be a 60-day taxi squad. Right. Um, a 60-man taxi squad. And within that 60-man taxi squad, uh, they'll divide it for 30 active MLB players. And then there's uh, a platform to kind of dwindle that number down as the season goes on to get the back, get back to the original 26 that was mandated um, in 2000. I think it was the winter of 2019. They mandated a 26 man roster. Um, so for me, you know, I'm going to San Francisco. I'm going to compete for one of those roster spots, um, you know, and then from there, you know, kind of, kind of, it's out of your control from that point. Right. So you just kind of show up, um, compete your tail off and, and do your job. Um, it seems like this year more than ever, there'll be a, a cycle of guys bouncing up and down from the taxi squad to the big leagues all year, more yeah. so than ever. Well, have you heard of that, that, that thing they're going to do with the, with Nashville too, right? They're going to have guys in Nashville. They're kind of ready to go. And, and when, when yeah, so I actually just found out about that yesterday. Yeah. I'm not sure the details of that, yeah, um, but I just know that from what I've heard, it seems like there's going to be 60 guys who are free agents mm -hmm. um, and predominantly so like upper level guys, you know, um, and those guys are going to continue to train and play games in Nashville. And it seems like that may be a feeder for these MLB teams to yeah. pool guys and sign them um, and, and join them to the taxi squad or join them to the, to the MLB roster. That's what it seemed. I'm not hundred percent sure, but um I'm excited for that because I have a lot of friends that, um, you know, unfortunately got released uh, due to this pandemic, essentially. And I think, you know, baseball is a great way to kind of, you know, fulfill those voids that we've been going through through this pandemic, right, for a lot of us. From a player's perspective, from a trainer, coaching, from a staff, and especially from a fan's perspective, I know that baseball brings a lot of joy to people. So I think the more baseball – around the nation and as long as it's safe, right? And they're mandating safety protocols. I think it's a great idea. Good deal. All right, well, let's jump back to those college days, back to uh, Embry-Riddle down in Daytona Beach. Uh, what made you come from your hometown of uh, Fremont, California, all the way to Embry-Riddle, which like I mentioned, uh, Daytona Beach, Florida? Yeah, so the biggest thing for me um, was kind of just the tradition that Embry-Riddle had made way before I even got there. Uh, I mean, if, you know, this is a true story. I Googled Embry-Riddle baseball and the first thing that came up was just a laundry list of, of winning traditions, elite pitchers, great catchers. Um, and, and then you start diving into the school side of it and you start realizing that, whoa, this is the Harvard of space. Um, you know, they're, they're top notch and they're innovative. So that, that was really attractive for me. Um, what, what essentially, you know, was the icing on the cake that made me commit to going there was uh, I had to go back to junior college for one more year because I was going to go back for my sophomore year. And I just felt like for me, going back to junior college at that time wasn't the best move for me. and It wasn't going to challenge me much. Um, I had a huge jump in velocity out of nowhere, um, started moving better, had a growth spurt. And I thought that for me at that time, the best gain for me was going to be to fail, you know? Um, so going there, I had no clue how to pitch. I was just a, a thrower. And then with, with Dave Thurno being there and the things I heard about him on the pitching side, I was sold. Right. So that was, that was the main thing. And then, uh, you know, you get a, a great education. Who doesn't, who doesn't mind that? Right. I mean, Daytona beach, you're on the beach. Um, it's unfortunately, I, I, I love, uh, some states that have winter and some snow and cold. I, I love it, but uh, baseball is not really my uh, my forte playing in freezing cold weather. So that was another attractive thing was the weather. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, you've been stationed in Virginia for the last what two or three years now, so you you've got yeah, a little bit of both. I, well, I might I might get a see a uh, key to the city here soon. <laughs> I get another save over there. So I hear you. <laughs> So we talked about this when you came uh, back this past summer, and uh, we, we talked about your, your physical transformation from when you were in college. When you came to the Gens, I think they had you listed at 6'3", 195 pounds, and you're well over that now with, with uh, a low percentage body fat and all that. So, so talk about that uh, key physical transformation. Yeah, yeah. So I think the biggest thing um, was eating more healthier foods. Yeah. And when I say like everyone says you need to incorporate healthier foods into your diet, for me it was incorporating those, but also eating a, a huge quantity of them so I could you know get the nutritional value and also you know stay fit and lean. Yeah. Um, you know that also it just it just has a lot to do with uh, with work ethic. Like I became obsessed with wanting to be the best player I could be. Right. Um, physically, you know. And it's easy to do that when you have a bunch of men around you who are doing the same thing before you, right? When I came to Embry-Riddle, I probably lifted for, honestly, maybe two months out of my entire life before that, you know? And that was that summer before I started playing um, summer baseball before I committed to Embry-Riddle. So the transition kind of started there and it got bigger into college and uh, even more so with the technology and the, you know, the the precision of training that I have now when it comes to training at, at push performance, you know, um, just elevating your game from a mobility side, mm -hmm. having a plan, right. Um, addressing the plan and then not just addressing the plan, you know, completely buying into that plan. Right. Uh, it takes trust, right. You know, you, we all get pulled in different directions to go train here, go train here, go train here. Um, and for me, it was just building a trust with the people that I was with um from Embry Riddle and gaining that momentum into Pro Bowl and building relationships and trust and actually committing to a full blown uh workout plan. And it, it's really monotonous. Like we could talk about it for hours. Um you know, but that's kind of the gist of it. Just fully buying in um to a workout plan and a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. And honestly, sleep. Um I think sleep is the biggest thing. Um you know those who know me I'm in bed nine nine thirty uh if you need me you won't you won't be able to get a hold of me past nine thirty and sleep um you know so i think that's the biggest thing making selfish choices um to put yourself in a good spot well that's another thing too for for the gens fans at home we're recording this at right now on the east coast it's ten thirty seven. he's out in arizona so what you're looking at it's seven thirty right now yeah yeah, 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 about so yeah early riser and we had a little connectivity issues so he was up even earlier trying to get you guys uh tr trying to talk to the folks back in waynesboro virginia yeah so. ty got us uh ty got us dialed in we we're having some some technology issues but we're all good now i think this is the first east to west coast interview that we've done so okay and changed up a little bit but uh yeah. so you came in a little bit late to waynesboro what was the story how you got to the gens um so the story how i got there was there was a communication from um our coaching staff at Embry Riddle that they wanted me to go play in Waynesboro. Mm -hmm. um, being a California kid and having my first um, full year away from my family across the United States was kind of a shock to me. So I wanted to go back right. to California, hug my family, hang out with them for a little bit. Um, and then once I was like, okay, you know what? I got me some family time. Let's go play baseball. Um, so I contacted Ty. I said, hey, what's going on? How you guys doing? Um, I know it's a little late. What do you guys feel about, you know, me coming out there? He's like, oh, we would love that. Yeah. And uh, the next day I was on a flight and, uh, you know, made it out to Waynesboro and didn't really know what to expect. And when I got there, it was more than I could ever imagine. You know, I'm used to eating hot dogs and, and pizza <laughs> yeah. post game for summer ball, right? Or not even that, maybe going to In-N-Out Burger and buying your own food with the guys. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how my summer ball experience was before, right? Mm -hmm. um, the day I touched down at Waynesboro, uh, I got picked up, and the first thing we did was stop at a convenience store, and I, I tried to buy some things, and they would not let me purchase what I bought. <laughs> you know, out of the kindness of his heart, you know, they were like, "No, no, no, we we got this. You came out here for us," and that made me realize that what I was into was something way different than ever before. 
and that just continued to continue to happen. Um, post game spread, uh, communicating with the community, everyone knew who we were before we got there. And for young men in the summer ball world, there's nothing more that there's nothing more that builds your confidence than having a community behind you. Right. You know, and and that for me was something that I loved and and something that made me you know, solidify the reason why I was there. There was no doubt in my mind that I made the right choice going there. If I could look back, I would have went there game one, Um, you know, but I I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take anything back. Um, I think that the city of Wayne's world is amazing. When I got there, it was, was, uh, the boys were rolling. Um, (laughs) I mean, they were on a heater, you know, and uh, who's this California kid walking in, you know, like he knows everybody and you know I was just I'm that guy I walk in with open arms I want to give everybody a high five high energy um and they they actually accepted me you know and that was a blessing um and then we kind of you know they they embedded me into their family which they already created and uh we actually oh man it was legendary through that through that you know skid um baseball is baseball right if if I come in and I I don't do my job someone picks me up Right. Uh, vice versa. If if they came in and, and they can't do their job that day, well, we know we got more arms in the bullpen to help them out. Um, and that's kind of how Waynesboro was from day one. And you could see that in the in the in the record books of, of why that team won. Yep. Um, I was a small piece of that puzzle. Um, I was there for a few weeks. Um, but what I did learn from that is that you can control one thing and that's how you compete. And uh, when, when we found ourselves down late, there was no what ifs from our dugout, from our bullpen. It was, okay, we're going to go score and put up a bunch of runs, and then we're going to close down this game and win, and we're going to celebrate. Right. And uh, you, got that, you got that vibe from day one. And uh, I think that that's something that the Waynesboro community still has embedded in them to this day. Well, and that's the most recent championship as well. We we are still searching for a championship since 2014 uh, when you were when you were there, and uh, we've been close. We were good this last summer. You, you got to witness a little bit of that. We uh, put up a record amount of wins last year. We won 32 ball games uh, out of the 42 that you play. But uh, pretty good summer. We got bounced from the playoffs a little bit early, but. Uh, Let's go back into your into your professional career. What was your draft night draft night like? It, you know, it was probably really cool to be drafted by you know uh, San Francisco. That's what forty five minutes probably from Fremont. Yeah, yeah, give or take. Uh, I think if if we're in the the midst of COVID, um, forty five minutes um, on a normal day, an hour fifteen <laughs> to two and a half hours maybe who knows yeah right? i tried seeing uh, that uh yeah. san francisco traffic on time yeah that's the very interesting uh, for you uh but my draft night was actually pretty casual um i was just at uh the where i was living in daytona my buddy jake uh, cavender's house and stetson nelson's house uh to my teammates from Embry riddle and we were kind of just hanging out um you know i i didn't i didn't i wasn't really convinced i was gonna get drafted but everyone kept telling me that right Right. Um, so for me, I was just excited to have an opportunity to possibly play baseball at a professional level. Um, sitting there watching it on my iPad, um, and then all of a sudden, I hear the San Francisco Giants have selected Tyler Sear uh, in the 10th round, pick 306 or whatever it was. And I was like, what? Because, you know, in the, in the movies or on TV, they get a phone call from the GM, and right? <laughs> uh, there was none of that for me. It was my name popped up on the screen. Yeah. My buddy Stetson said, hey, did you hear that? Um, some explicit words were said of excitement, <laughs> bunch of hugs, and uh, yeah, that was kind of it. And then from there, we, we celebrated with some, uh, some big old ribeye steaks mm. and some oysters on the grill. Nice. Yeah, so that was, uh, was kind of my draft night. Uh, family was ecstatic. Um, you know, it kind of, it was kind of crazy because it was in the 10th round and a lot of my friends got drafted earlier, mm-hmm. um, on day one and in the earlier rounds of day two. So, um, a lot of people didn't know I got drafted Yeah, because there's so many people that get drafted, you know, there's 40 rounds. Um, unfortunately this year there wasn't, 
Right. So it was, it was just kind of a lot, a mix of emotions, right? Um, you're excited. You're also really nervous because you don't have all the questions that, you know, you need answers to. Um, you don't even know where to start, right? You don't even know what questions to ask. Um, so it all happened really quick. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for the young men who do get the opportunity to do that. Um, biggest advice is uh, be open to anything, you know. Um, this game is always evolving. Right. And I think that, uh, you know, your biggest tool is yourself. And if you don't study yourself, you know, um, you're kind of you're kind of hurting. So I think uh, I think the draft process went full circle from excitement all the way to realizing that, hey, now this is a this is a grown man's game and you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Well, and now you've been spending a lot of time over here in uh, in Virginia. You've been playing for the Richmond Flying Squirrels and Ann and I were actually lucky enough. We, we came down and we got uh, we got a game in there at the Diamond. And uh, actually, it was a sweet night to come, too, because it was the night that uh, you guys were taking on the Senators. Um, and it was Ryan Zimmerman's first night of a uh, rehab. Uh, rehab assignment. And yeah. then Michael A. Taylor was in there. Like, some, some very recognizable names, especially for a Nats fan such as myself. But, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of partial there. But uh, then you came in late in the ball game and ended up actually picking up a win. So I said that was the best case scenario. If yeah. we're gonna get beat, I guess it'd be okay to be beat by a general. But uh, yeah, I do. I do remember that game too, um, just because of the weather. Yeah, it was ugly. That day was ugly, and then all of a sudden game time hit and it was beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I mean, that kind of just sums up some some weather um, in Richmond. Um, you know, with the with the heavy rains and then that thick thick layer of uh I almost want to call humidity. it set. you almost feel like you're around a bunch of set and so thick the uh, humidity <laughs> post rain yeah. right yeah. um but yeah I mean you said that you said it yourself the Richmond Stadium is unbelievable yeah uh the fans in Richmond are, are unbelievable um, good crowd in there that night yeah good crowd good crowd I've only uh I've only felt so homey like that in one other place and it's been Waynesboro nice um you know, and that kind of gives me that that home feeling. Richmond's a super special place in my heart, um, and you know, so is Waynesboro. And it's also awesome that we're so close to a lot of these parks on the East Coast, because like you just said, we have we do have a lot of people who rehab in the Eastern League. For sure. Um, and it's also fun, you know, picking those guys' brains and um, competing against arguably one of the best hitters in the world. Yeah. Well, especially with the Nationals, they've got their double A's in Harrisburg, which is not a long trip from dc and then yeah. their triple a is actually in fresno so mm -hmm. a lot of times you see the guys that are going to be called up on a moment's notice chilling in harrisburg yep. exactly. you know instead of having to make the cross-country trip so yeah so i i, I came close with uh, a lot of those guys in harrisburg because we played them a bunch felt like seven times a week right <laughs> um so we we became pretty close um because i was i would always pitch against them and uh you know, the running joke was that when, when I got in the game versus them, it was game over. <laughs> I, for some reason, the Senators had no chance um, against me. I have them circled. I, I get really excited when we play them because for some reason I just pitch really well, you yeah. know. Um, and then those guys are first class, and I think that transitions all the way down to um, their World Series victory. And it was awesome to see a lot of those guys that I know sure. uh, get a ring. Yeah. Uh, we called their team the varsity team. So it was their <laughs> had a big league team, their varsity team, which was in double A, and then their triple A team, which in which is in Fresno. <laughs> uh, and so that when they told me that, I thought that was hilarious. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, man. So what we like doing here to finish things up is is bring back the favorite memory of, of your time in Waynesboro. Oh, my favorite memory. Let's see. Um, so there's a couple, I have a, uh, I have a host family one. That's pretty funny. Okay. Um, so I was saying with the prices when I was there, great family. Um, and I kind of came in late, like we said, so they already had a uh, built a relationship with the player who was there already and everything was good. Um, and I mean, we're, we're young, young kids, right? We're always fooling around. We're always wrestling. Um, so, you know, we always had wrestling matches at the Price's house in the basement and it would go, I mean, it would get violent. It would go to the point where, you know, one person couldn't wrestle because they had to be the judge of, of when it would stop, you know? 
uh, just so no blood was shed. <laughs> you know, so uh, that's probably my, my, my most fun, uh, you know, house uh, host family memory because we would just get done competing our tails off on the field for four and a half hours or whatever. Right. I'd fuel up just to get enough energies to go home and wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty fun. Um, arguably the best memory was, uh, you know, that championship game when, I mean, looking back at it now, if, if you look at the script, we had absolutely no chance. Right. Uh, you know, and then and the ball bounced our way, and then at a blink of an eye, we were up and we were closing it out, you know, in the ninth. Yeah. Um, and it, it's so crazy. You could ask me details about that game, and I only remember a glimpse of it um, because of how intense it was. Yep. Um, I even had to go back and look at the look at the you know the tapes and the footage and, and the script to see exactly how it went down to uh, to remember that. But the excitement from the moment that last out was made and just hearing everybody erupt um, and everybody be so excited and, and be champions, you know, um, especially in the fashion we did it, it was a, literally a miracle game. For sure, you can't make that up. Yeah, and so that that those two memories are probably what takes the cake for me. Um, you know, huge shout out to the prices for opening up their doors for me and, uh, you know, numerous generals before me. And then obviously the championship game is, is something I'll never forget. And I still got my ring in California in the box, <laughs> not a speck of dust on it, you know, um, wore it a few times out for a nice dinner, uh, with the suit on, of course, I'm there not putting that ring on unless I'm giving it the respect <laughs> with the suit, you know, so those two are for sure my favorite memories good deal man well hey that's a great uh, great note to finish on i really appreciate you taking the time out getting up early this morning to talk with us and uh uh best of luck this year man we'll be rooting for you and and you know just looking at your numbers i, I really don't see how they can hold you down much longer brother appreciate that ty yeah you know i think uh i think for for a lot of young people who get frustrated um or people in general with with not getting rewarded for their re results in any workplace um, I think that the only thing you can do is continue to sharpen your axe, yep. continue to continue to be better, continue to find your weaknesses and continue to gain um, on those things. I think that that's something that I've continued to do. And that's why I don't get frustrated. Um, and I appreciate you saying that um, it means a lot. And I'm excited for this year. Yeah, man. All right. Well, again, really appreciate it, brother. Right on, Ty. I appreciate you. Go Generals. Absolutely.